and evening and afternoon, whatever, based on wherever you are in the world. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, to all the audiences to take out your time on a Saturday and uh, join this session. And I hope you have enjoyed the previous sessions. And this session is mostly focused on advanced hunting on Defender. And uh, the idea here is to keep it more demo oriented. So I'll try to spend more time on security portal itself so that uh, you can see things in action. And uh, with that said, uh, I'll get started. OK, so before I get started, one more thing. Uh, stick to the end uh, to make sure that you get your chances to win this wonderful prizes, right? Uh, and then with that said, <clears throat> I would like to start on unleashing your Defender Advance hunting for enhanced threat detection uh, in this session. And I am MBB in security, MCT, and uh, an author for a book for KQL for Sentinel. You can reach out to me over LinkedIn if you wish to, or if you have any questions around Defender or Microsoft security in, in general. Uh, with that said, uh, we would get started with the agenda here, and I've tried to keep it simple. We'll start with an introduction, what an advanced hunting is. Then we're going to move to understanding the threat handling at a very high level. Uh, maybe most of you know that, but still this is maybe a recap for uh, many of you. And then the benefits, like why do we do it? Like why do we do it and what we get out of doing this? Then we're going to look at how you can craft. So why I say craft? Because it's not that any other query language, right? The query here in advanced hunting, it's basically you craft or design the query depending on the kind of threat landscape evolution and also your hypothesis you have in mind, right? That's what it is termed as crafting a query. Then we will be interpreting the results once we see it. And I'm also going to show you that uh, in the result itself, you can really find uh, very minute details as well. Then the best practices, obviously, uh, like every other topic, it has also some best practices. If you follow, uh, you will definitely going to get the better result at a faster pace. And then we're going to talk about uh, questions and answers or Q&A and what the next step we should do from here, right? So that said, if I get started, right? So uh, to understand what uh, advanced threat hunting is, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, where exactly in the phase of defender it comes in, right? So let's say uh, we have a defender, any defender, like mostly uh, I'll talk about the whole defender suite itself, maybe defender for endpoint, defender for office, defender for identity, anything you basically onboard in your organization, right? Uh, what happens there? The onboarding happened first. So what we what exactly mean by onboarding? that is deploying of defenders and applying the policies. Let's say if you are deploying Defender for Office, you're going to configure policies. If you are deploying a Defender for Endpoint, you're going to onboard them and apply certain, let's say, ASR rules and things like that. So that's a part of whole part of onboarding itself. Now, once you do the onboarding, right, what Microsoft Defender does, it starts to collect the data which is like the telemetry data. Let's say if we talk about Defender for Office, right? It is going to collect your email event, email attachment event, and, and further details around your email traffic, right? And email transactions. We talk about Defender for Endpoint. It is going to basically uh, collect all the endpoint specific data. That might be your registry event for your endpoint. That might be your file events. That might be the network interaction happens from the endpoint device and things like that. So basically Microsoft, the moment it's onboarded, right? It's actually start to collect all the data and then based on the data, Defender Engine basically identifies all the alerting and things like that. But this data is also given to the customers so that we can use it at our convenience that, uh, all right, if we want to do something more to it. And that's where this advanced hunting picture comes into play. So. Third, as I mentioned, we see Defender in action. So what exactly that means? We have Defender onboarded. We have Defender data collection started, right? Uh, and, and by the way, Defender data collection is something like happens automatically. That's not a process or a step which we need to wait for. It happens automatically. 
right? And uh, then it starts to generate alert. Let's say you have a malware, you have a malware, or you have uh, something like you have a threat in the endpoint or you have a policy violation, you start getting alerts and you start to block threats, right? So that's where we see different in action. And then we get into advanced hunting and why it is exactly used in this fashion. Reason is uh, once we have some alerts, right? We see certain elements in the alert as, as an identifier, let's say, if we have an incident for an endpoint, right? As an entity, we're going to see the Defender machines. Maybe you're going to see the IP address. So those are the view or those are the details we already get within the Defender. But if we want to go, let's say, dig deeper, right? Let's say we want to know more about the, more about the device, for example. We get an incident out of a device and then we want to see, OK, let's see if last 24 hours this device has gone offline once or not, right, kind of things. So that will that will definitely give a signal that, OK, was there any attack or somebody tried to take it down and things like that. That's where we start getting into advanced hunting. And obviously, the word advanced, it's, it's kind of proactive. And to get started, right, what you should have, you should have a fair idea of what data being collected in Defender. Maybe that's Defender for Office and Defender for Endpoint or Identity, whichever product we're talking about. Um, each product collects different set of data, and we should have a little bit of idea of KQL. But if not, I will quote from the previous session that uh, you know you can always use a new editor with Dragon or with with like the feature in there without a limited knowledge in KQL. Also, you should be able to build the queries. Then you should have an idea of threat hunting. Let's say you were given, let's say you're given all the, you know, um, if you talk about port scanning, right? You haven't, you should have an idea that what a port scanning is. That means, you know, somebody is trying to scan a port in, in five minutes, like 500 times, something like that. So that we can write our query condition in that way that we exactly pick up that information out of that haystack, right? And then once we have the advanced hunting done, we should be able to relate, you know, we should be able to relate it back to the additional context. Let's say if if we started advanced hunting because we were investigating some incidents uh, or maybe uh, we were doing a proactive thing, whatever was our context, because advanced hunting is not something we go ahead and start doing it. We should have a motive. Either we are driven by an incident or we should do a proactive hunting, depending on what our related context are, is. Once you get the results, we relate it back, right? So that's the fundamental uh, details about, I would say, advanced hunting in Microsoft Defender. Now we'll try to understand a bit, like you know, at a very high level, um, what exactly this is. As I mentioned, this has to be proactive. So proactive in the sense, uh, either you have an incident and then you want to get more information about the incident, or you know that you have, let's say, 5,000 machines or 5,000 mailboxes in an environment. You want to proactively go ahead and then find out, OK, if there is an anomaly, like someone is sending too many mails or someone is sending very less mails, things like that, or one account is sending mail to everyone and things like that. In case of endpoint, uh, if you want to say there is something like botnet callback, like let's say every particular time of the week, the device try to connect to some sort of URLs, things like that. So those are called kind of proactive hunting, right? And that's what we do do in threat hunting. And the next thing is, once we have the proactiveness in mind, it has to be a hypothesis driven. So when I say hypothesis, so it's like we have some thoughts in our mind that what could go wrong, right? We cannot directly go ahead and then you know do a wild search because either Either we have to take a use case, let's say, you know, somebody is trying to log on to the device and then failing every time and suddenly he's successful. So let's talk about brute force. So we have an hypothesis that there's a plot possible brute force uh, on the devices I want to check. Now, uh, in that case, uh, what is supposed to happen is uh, we have to have the hypothesis first here. Either that can come from an incident or that can, you know, uh, can come from, uh, you know, you, your, your, learning about the industry threats and things like that. Whichever way it comes, it comes proactively and then it's hypothesis driven. Then once we do the advanced hunting, right? Hypothesis is just a state of mind basically where we think there is a possible threat, right? 
Now we do that advanced hunting and do the threat hunting, and then we have to have an evidence. Let's say we write a query on port scanning, or we try to write a query wherein we try to see the failed logins and consecutive uh, successful logins for device logins. Um, we can write the query very well, but if the query doesn't give any result, that means that's that didn't happen in the environment. So to solidify the threat hunting, once we have the proactive idea, we have the hypothesis defined, we have to have an evidence and Till the time we get evidence, uh, you know, if a hypothesis is strong, we should be keep on evaluating the query again and again by either changing thresholds or conditions and things like that. And then, you know, uh, obviously, if we do something right, uh, if we get somebody has tried to log into the machine X in five minutes, 20 time, and then he failed, and then 21st time he was successful. So that is basically linked to a threat, right? So that's the whole story here uh, when you talk about threat hunting. So we have to be proactive, then there has to be fundamentally uh, a hypothesis and we have to find an evidence uh, based on the queries we write and eventually whatever results come in, if we get any result, that result has to be based on a particular threat or, or Maybe it can be more than one at cases, but at least there should be one threat in in case, right? And again, this is more of a logical understanding of a threat hunting, what it is, not like physical step one, step through. So this is a mind map we we follow as a threat hunter and then do threat hunting, right? Then if you look at what is the benefit, right? So benefit is obviously we are using Defender. Defender has its own engine of threat detection. We have rules in place, but the first benefit is there is a real time data analysis. So Defender almost ingest the raw data real time and we can, uh, you know, we can uh, eventually eventually uh, do that. Uh, the real time data analysis using your KQL queries, right? Um, the next thing I'm going to look at is we always write custom queries because obviously if we are proactively finding something which we have a hypothesis on or let's say the industry defines a hypothesis, we have to write the custom query which I'm going to demo in a while that that has to be there. Then the next piece is let's say because Defender is connected to all the endpoints or maybe all the mailboxes. So there is a feasibility that once you write a query that can target one endpoint, or maybe we can do a cross correlation. To give you an example, let's say you have figured out there's a malicious hash on device one. You can take out that hash, write a custom query real time, and then figure it out if any other devices that kind of has that hash or contains that hash or any file was created through that hash and things like that. So this is called cross endpoint data search and it is only feasible because with advanced hunting, we are given access to the entire raw data here, right? Then obviously data correlation is the last one, uh, but, but this is the most crucial one because just to give you an example, there are tables like device info, device logon events, device registry event. So now we have two queries, right? Let's say one is checking in last 24 hours or last 30 days, was there any sensitive registry changes or not? And then we come back to the logon events and we also see the same thing. If there was like some, some odd logon, somebody tried to log in uh, again and again, they failed and they're successful. Now they are two silo queries what you can do is you can always correlate to them. Now thinking a little bigger picture here, we can also do something like, you know, uh, correlation with different products. Let's say we take uh, Defender for identity tables, which contains you no know, Defender domain domain controller logs, or maybe you talk about email events. So let's say if I have, I have, I am fully on border Defender, right? And uh, in that way, in that way, what happens is, um, uh, once I have written a query to kind of correlate in uh, both my email events and my Defender events, right? So that kind of correlation can happen over time. Uh, so that's where it is kind of beneficial and input driven, uh, right? Uh, how it is done.
So that's about a kind of cross data correlation. Now to look at next, what I'm going to look at how we can build custom queries, right? Um, building custom queries, as I say, you know, or you can say crafting custom queries. Uh, first of all, um, if we have the hypothesis driven uh, approach, we always gonna search. If we already have, let's say, a key or value, for example, if we have a host name, if we have IP address, we're gonna search that IP address across all tables. So this is again, this is a format I have, I have basically come across with all the years of threat hunting experience. You can definitely have your own method of building things, but this pretty much works, so you can also clone this approach. So you're gonna search it. So there's a keyword called search, and then you give that IP address or host name. That is going to list out all the tables. You have the you have that entity available. Then we're gonna project it. It's kind of select because when you do a search, right? It gives us enormous amount of data, which will which can deviate us from thinking that okay, this is overwhelming. So once we do a search, we really need to project uh, specific columns which are meaningful to us, right? Then there are columns which are having string data, let's say for example, or there are columns which are having JSON data, which is more of a complex structure in data wherein it's not so readable. What we do is we extend that column runtime in a way that it gives us a specific you know, value out of the column. Let's say there's an array and then the first element of array has a device, you know, device network location and things like that. So we extend it or we can directly extend it or we can also parse it to extend it. Next, once we start writing our query, right? Eventually we might see, because this is basically a telemetry or a very verbose log what Defender captures, the most probable case is we see a lot of data sets, a lot of results, which can again be overwhelming and, and will not give us exact results we are looking at, right? To take an example, uh, if we are looking at a case wherein, let's say the user has five failed logins and then one successful login, and if we just try to write a query, show me all the login events, that's not gonna do because we it, it's pretty much very difficult to read each row and see this is success, this is failure. So that's where what we do is summarize. We try to summarize, let's say successful versus failed events. So with that, what happens is, we can get a different perspective of the data. We see the successful logs from one perspective. We're going to see the you know, failed log from one perspective. To look, given another example for different for office, we're going to see you know uh, emails sent by particular user. So that gives us which kind of user sends how many emails. To give a very simple example. So once we are summarized, that gives a pretty much perspective of the data, and uh, we have a fair idea of what the result look like. And, and that's pretty much close to our eyes, right? This is what exactly are looking for. There are cases you can enhance it more by just writing a visual. So for example, if I'm writing a query that give me the number of process events each device is creating in my environment. Now you gotta you gotta get a table list, right? And that table list is huge and and if you imagine if you have like 1000 devices, right? It's very, very difficult to read uh, which is the top five and things like that. You can apply order by, but still that doesn't give. So you can apply visualization with writing a right query in here. That gives you a pictorial representation and that's the biggest example of your hypothesis getting true or false, right? That's how you build or craft your custom queries. Now, once you have written a query, right? I've just taken an example of a query and this is what the query console looks like. So you have a query console to write your query. You have an option to run the query and you also have a couple of other option to look at for last 30 days or maybe last seven days or any time frame for the matter, right? And then uh, you can also share that link with your coworker wherein let's say you have done some sort of investigation and you wanted to share to someone else who is also doing the same thing. So he will he will start from where you ended writing your query, right? And and obviously in the results search, we're gonna get uh, more and more when you jump onto the demo, but right now uh, this is what it is, it is looking like, right? Uh, 
if we go to the next one, what are you going to see on anything you click on, right? The result itself is really good enough or the Defender console is good enough to show you much more evidence. For example, in this case, right? We are trying to get device events uh, where the action type is ASR. That means we are trying to get the attack surface reduction rule specific events. And then the moment I clicked on one record, it basically says inspecting the record and you can see the right side pane is really, really tailored according to the row. It is showing the device. It is showing the risk level of the device. Obviously, that's taken from the same row, but the representation is really good enough for us to understand and act upon whatever we want to do out of advanced hunting. This also gives you the process tree. So obviously, process tree is not built based on that particular row. It also builds based on your entire you know, device events right but you get all these things built in and available for you once you use advanced hunting now what are the best practices if we try to look at obviously as i mentioned try to use hypothesis you know driven approach and why we see that because if you use hypothesis driven approach there is a fair chance that you have a direction to your query or you have a direction to your advanced hunting. Otherwise, it's just like an endless search, right? Either you get someone report a threat and you do an advanced hunting. In that case, your hypothesis becomes the report by the user. Or if you have if you have figured out there's a you know evolving threat in the threat landscape or or in the industry, you can pick that as a hypothesis driven approach and then pick that as a hypothesis and then get that going from there. Then again, this is the most important piece, I would say. Um, we think that, you know, um, today that we write one query and then that's going to run for ages and, and give us the same result. No, it, it's not going to be there. To give you an example of how it looks like, uh, basically what happens is, uh, let's say you were writing a brute force rule today that give me, give me all the logins where people failed 50 times and then after that they were successful one time so imagine that after a few years the tool attackers are going to get are going to use right the tools are going to get more sophisticated and they might not need 50 attempts they might not need even attempts right they can use uh, any other privilege escalation techniques or any other you know token generation techniques let's say they can let you sign into any of their website and they get their beer token and then they log in so that means the query you have written here that's not relevant if if attackers evolved so it's very important that you know time to time you you know evolve and update your queries that's number one and second thing is uh, you can also uh, understand you can also understand that uh, by updating, you're making sure that your uh, queries are pretty much uh, up to date and they are they are really, really performing well. And there's also another reason to update it. So once we write one query, right, that that's not expected to give very good results, like I would say less false positive from day one. So we have to get to a level by only fine tuning and redefining the queries uh, over time to get less and less false positive so that our SOC analyst get less tickets or less incidents. The third one is collaborate and share insights. In the, in the field of security and, and specifically, for, specifically for advanced threat hunting, it's really important, right? Um, because we, we work in a team wherein if we kind of write a query, it's, it's very obvious that we share the query and get a feedback from our peers or anybody else who is actually working in the industry that what exactly that query means coming back to the next example of port scanning so port scanning is let's say today i write a rule that okay get the get the events from device network events and then uh, look at 100 port scanning in five minutes and and write it you're going to share that right and then you can get and get an insight that okay the time frame attackers are using is like five minutes it has reduced to five minutes to one minute so in that way that is very important for you to write the queries and uh, you know you can also see changes according to the environment 
So and 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 it also depends on the tool attackers are using. There is one tool which can do 500 port scan in five minutes. There can be another tool which does a port scan, thousand port scan in one minute. So in in both the cases, if there is no collaboration and and there's no sharing of insights, you're gonna miss that part, and then your query is never gonna pick up that actual attack, right? And uh, the fundamentally uh, last one, obviously, we always say document. So document doesn't mean that you have to write pages of page documentation. It's just that each hunt you do. So let's say you are starting a hypothesis today that I want to capture brute force. Step one or iteration one, we say we uh, set a threshold of 10 failed logins and one successful logins. Document that we see that doesn't work or that work for 30% of the user. Then we go iteration two. Then we make like, you know, threshold has five failed and one successful. Then we see another 30%. So now we can do two things. Either we can do two different rules or we can combine them in one rule or we can find out a middle ground as like threshold as seven. So whatever we do, right, it's very important document it and, and learn from each hunt because if we don't document it, eventually, let's say six months later, when you come back to the query, it, it's really impossible to understand why the threshold is 10, why the threshold is five, things like that. Then we will jump on to the demo part of the session now. And uh, let me try to share my screen over here. And I think you should be able to see it right now. And I'll click to Defender Home. And I'll let it load. So, the way to find out, right, as I say, this is security.microsoft.com and you will be, this is the URL you should go to, to log into Defender. And uh, if you go to the left navigation, I will expand it out. And the third option says hunting and the sub menu under hunting is advanced hunting. Now I can directly click on that. What you could also do if you are a regular threat hunter or, or threat hunting is part of your day job, you can always bookmark that URL so that you can just directly come to that. You don't need to go through navigation. Now I'm going to collapse the left navigation once again uh, to get some space here. Now if you look at this has three sections, one full section in the left side and on the right side it is broken into two sections. So this is a place basically where we write our KQL for advanced hunting. Now how we come to this place, there are different ways. As I say, if you have a hypothesis, you can come to this directly or if you are coming based on an incident which is reported, you can come from an incident pane as well to advanced hunting. So that's the path you come to here. Then the first thing to observe, right? If you if you look at in the left navigation, we are under the schema tab. So the schema gives us, depending on your access and your licenses, you're going to see really all the tables, whatever you have. So as you see, I have really a good license, so I'm, I'm kind of see all the things. So we look at alerts and behaviors. These are the alert and behavior tables, whatever Defender provides. Now, if you talk about raw data, we are talking about apps and identities. So the top one are, all apps, so maybe different for cloud apps and and different of identity related tables, whatever you see. And the next one is email and collaboration, which captures the verbose data of email, as I mentioned, right? And the next one is different for endpoint specific devices, which is all the device events, device file certificate events, and device file events and things like that, right? And the next part to it is the vulnerability management, depending on what again, whatever licenses you have, you're going to get to see all these tables. And then there's also an option for exposure management recently, right? Now, what is the benefit of having this left navigation? Now you have an idea of the scope based on where you can write the query, 
right? So you can utilize everything you see here to write your advanced hunting query. Now coming to that, either you can directly query a table, you can do a cross correlation, you can join them, you can, you know, um, do a sub query kind of stuff in, in, in multiple tables and things like that. Now, depending on your hypothesis, you're gonna choose that. And then let's say you have an hypothesis and you are, okay, thank you. Does this look good? I have, I have zoomed in. All right. Uh, yeah. Feel free to let me if you have any other feedback. Uh, so what uh, what is happening here is uh, looking at this. Let me try to let's say I'm very new here, right? I'm going to write my first query. So there's already a query by default. I will. Uh, try to add new. So if you click on new, right, you see there are two things, query in query editor and query in query builder. So query editor is going to give me a flat screen and it is really helpful if you have a fair idea of KQL to get started. Or if you are really new, you can start with the query builder. And if you look at this basically gives you a, you know, drop down based approach to build your queries. Let's say if I, straight away load an example, load a, uh, you know, file activity by name. Uh, if I load this, right, let me close this and let me get some spaces here. So it basically created all these queries for me with, with a, you know, uh, interface based approach. This is one of the things and this is what you get out of this, right? Now, if we try to get a simple new query, I'll go back to, okay, let me go back to the first new query wherein we can write in. Now, let's say you, you want to do a hands-on, you get started. So, and, and we start with, let's say, device info table. And we have no idea what the schema looking like, what data it contains, though the name says to some extent, but to look at the schema, you can always expand this and you're gonna get the schema. But to make it a little more interesting, what you're gonna write is take one. And then once you write take one, you can select, you know, from what place or how long its data should be taken. Now, uh, let's say, you know, uh, is it last 30 days? Is it last seven days? Or even you can you can go for a custom range. But one thing to keep in mind, this data here, you can only query uh, by design to last one month. So even if you're going for custom range, you have to limit your data search within last one month. Then let me run this query. So what it does, it randomly picks up one row from device info and show me the results. Now I got two insights out of this. Number one, what is the schema looking like? And what is the sample data look like? So that also gives me as a threat hunter, what kind of data set it is and what data it can contain. And also if you look at the specific details around this table, and if I use the scroll bar, you would see much more data here. You can either, Click on this. The moment you click on this, as I say, I've shown you in the screenshot, the right side thing, it picked up and it inspected the record and it has really detailed out much more information in a lot of readable and better way here, right? Now, let's say if I want to know very specifically around this public IP and you can see there's a hyperlink, I'm going to click on that IP and you see the right side pane basically changed the context. So, and it not only changes the context, it also gives you certain benefits or certain handy tools to be used from here. So let's say if I want to add this IP as an indicator, so indicator in the sense this goes and sets an IOC and uh, it, it says that, okay, you don't, uh, you don't need to write manually add it as an indicator. You can open that in cloud app IP settings. You can you know do that in IP address page and things like that. Now, with that said, uh, and also it talks about what is the severity and, and things like that. Now, what you could do is, let's say you have come here to investigate for an incident. You can always link it to an incident. If I click on this, it's gonna ask, right, create a new incident or 
so let's say you are doing an advanced threat hunting based on a uh, hypothesis. You find that, okay, let's try to create an incident so that it's helpful to investigate and track it in a better way. You can create a new one. You can link it to existing one and things like that. So that basically gives you a privilege to attach your advanced hunting results to a existing or a new incident. You can also take results, sorry, take actions from here and uh, obviously what are the actions? Because we're talking about devices, we have all the options, whatever action we can take against a device. All right now, that's one of the things I would say uh, we have written here. Now let's let's try to make it a uh, little bit more query specific, wherein we uh, you know write something here. So device or let's say again uh, I'm. If I feel that okay, I, I need some help to do here and, and things like that. What I should do is in the left navigation, we should go to the queries tab. So by default, right, there are a lot of you know queries offered by Microsoft wherein you can let's say go to email queries, attachment queries, ATV policy status check. So if I click on that, let me try to so there are a couple of options. I run the query. What it did, just give it a moment. Yeah. So you see it loaded a pre built query, right? Uh, you loaded a pre built query here, and you can basically uh, do a threat hunt based on that. So either you run it for the last seven days, things like that. And then, like this, if you want to save some query, right? Let's say you want to do some daily hunting or daily reporting and stuff like that, you can click on save save as a query or save as a function and according to that you're going to see that in functions right so that's kind of a thing is available as a part of defender threat hunting uh, and i would go back to the previous one and let me try to add one device events where all right again if i'm stuck here i don't know what the device event table look like. What I'm going to do is, um, as I say, right, we're going to search for something by taking it a take one. And let's say I want to write a query. Where? File name equal to host. Now, obviously, for last 30 days, it's going to give me a good amount of results, right? Now, I, if I want to do something like, as you see, right, this is 384 items. And again, the moment it goes beyond a number, it's, it's really difficult to get hold of understanding what, what exactly it is. So now if I want to summarize this, I would give a perspective of count by bin timestamp comma one hour that's it so let's break it down in account of one hour so that's how that's how we see it right so let's say if we are searching for this as a malware exe or a specific hash we want to see what is the occurrence of that and and over time maybe we can give it as a device name as well so it will tell me the device specific details so as you see it, it just broke it down on a device specific details now if i want to go for 24 hours uh, we can always do that now again still the result is kind of you know uh tabular right to make it more interesting i'd say make it area chart let's see what it gives you see now this this definitely gives you a fair idea right the hypothesis you're doing or the query you're writing does it make sense or or if there's a change you need to do and this is the evidence you have so if you see this is this evident is good you can always kind of save this as a threat hunting or or what you can also do is create a query out of it. So let's say if you feel this is a near nice query. So obviously I'll take out the render one and you can create a detection rule over here. So if I create it, obviously there are certain things uh, which which doesn't let you write all the queries. So I'd say there are required columns here. Um, but let me try to get this. Look at this last two deleted. I'll create detection rule. 
as you see here, right? Either I can create a continuous one, I can create every hour, every three hour. So with that, if I do that, it can also help me decide the action. Okay. Test detection, alert type, test alert, severity, I'm gonna go medium, category, let's say it's a malware. And uh, threat analytics report will not do anything. This is because we don't know it yet. Go next. There is something still at the bottom. Describe. Test alert, let me try to go next. It is impacting my device. If I, if I say, and what is the device ID? This is the device ID. Go next. And why I selected that? So you can actually even write a rule to take action automatically from advanced hunting itself, right? So, and then once I maybe just tap execution, you can also scope it for which device scope it is. Like I have a device group scope wherein it, there are a couple of devices listed. I can do it or I can do it for all and then summarize it. So let me cancel it for now. So with that said, uh, I would again like to iterate the piece that uh, fundamentally with advanced hunting, either you come here with a hypothesis driven approach or you come here from an incident to do some more advanced hunting, right? Uh, you really can leverage the screen to get more and more deeper analysis based on the defender data collect data collected by defender itself, right? So with that said, now I would like to open the floor for questions. And in the meantime, you can also scan this QR code uh, because this is the Microsoft Learn link where you can get started with Microsoft documentation for advanced hunting. So with that said, uh, let me give it back to everyone for any questions you have.